We are continuing our month long of the National Hispanic Heritage Month read along. We are working through the Oxford Book of Latin American Short Stories and we got a good one for you today called The Clearing or The Cove or The Opening. It's translated into a lot of different things. Coming up on the Codex Cantina, this one is not for the faint of heart. Trigger warnings coming up soon. Welcome to the Codex Cantina where I am Una. And I am Crypto. If you are new to the Codex Cantina, we typically go a step deeper into the books that we read, pulling out some of the hidden meanings and interpretations. If you are down for something like that, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And as always, we start off with publication information. This was written by Luisa Mercedes Levinson, and she is an upper-class Argentinian woman. This story was first collected in the El Estigma del Tiempo in 1977, and we actually don't know or we couldn't find when it was actually written. But our copy was translated by Sarah Arvio. And in Spanish, the title is El Abra, which is kind of like meaning out in the opening, hence a lot of different variations for the translation and title for this piece. Now, this piece takes place in the Misiones jungle in Argentina, if you were unfamiliar with the area. So a couple of the key elements we'll talk about today is oppression. We'll talk about some violence. And there is a big trigger warning here. There is domestic violence against a woman. So what we're going to do is a very quick plot breakdown, and then we're going to go into some of our analysis and discussion on this piece. So for plot, this starts off with the description of a house in a clearing being strangled by the Misiones jungle, which, as we said earlier, is the northeast junk, uh, corner of Argentina. A plump, unnamed woman is brought back from the opera by Alcibiades, who sits in a hammock almost surrounded by a murk of mosquitoes and bugs. Immediately setting up some of the imagery of this piece in terms of openings and then surroundings. She came with him hoping for the promise of modernization. However, instead she is attacked daily by this man and kept under his rule and thumb. Now, Ciro, a ranch hand, is taking care of the farm, and whenever the man leaves, he would make love to our unnamed narrator. Now, Alcibiades returns to find the two in the act and shoots Ciro dead. He ties up the woman only for the woman to fight back and shoot Alcibiades in return. And the ending is rather mysterious, with the sun kind of beating down on her as she is kind of ensnared in this hammock. End plot. That's yeah, good. It's short, sweet, but it gets right to the point. So why do you think this was called The Clearing or The Cove? So this is similar or slash different than In a Grove, where this story takes place in a cove, and it happens in a very short time period, uh, all the action. Well, what's interesting about this is if all we know is this cove, right? Like the the the... The narrator knowledge of telling this story is only what's in this cove. What's interesting is how males impact the scene is one of my takeaways for this. So if, if we look at our narrative consciousness being whatever is in this cove, whenever a man entered or leaved into this unnamed narrator's life, you'll notice things change drastically. As soon as Alcibiades left the scene, Chiro or Ciro transforms into her lover, which you didn't really see coming, right? He was normally just completely aloof and just running the farm or whatever it is, if you will, when the other man was there. And then as soon as Alcibiades returns, he shoots Ciro dead. And as soon as Ciro's dead, again, that translates her experience from just sitting there relaxed to this ensnaring hammock and very, I mean, she was always being oppressed, but the the narration changes as well. So the wording on this is very interesting to look at it from a male-female perspective, wouldn't you say? Oh, I definitely agree. I also thought that maybe it might be a translation thing as well, but the idea of the cove or opening, there's a lot of space here. And at the end of the story, she's confined and restricted. She's also confined and restricted by the men in her life as well. And depending on which man in, is in her life at that point in time or which group of men, she wears a specific mask. They kept talking about the mask that she wears, and she's able to transform almost based on who's on stage. If we view the opening as a stage or a performance, based on what role she must play is the mask that she wears at that point in time. Yeah, it's pretty incredible writing to be able to have such a complex character in such a short piece. Well, it's kind of cool, too. I mean... Even her gun had two bullets. There was two men in her life, right? Yeah, there's a lot of duality to this story as well. 
One of the quotes that I had here that I kind of wanted to bring up in regards to feminism here and how she feels oppressed and has no power in the presence of these men. If she knew how to call that man, he would come. He would rush to her side and untie the knot and unwind the rope and free the rims of the hammock. And that would mean life and power and the reign of women and then revenge. So for this quote, I feel like the narrator is getting at that her shackles, she, she's not blaming the hammock. Her shackles are men forcing her to do these things as opposed to her own free will. Yeah, I think the hammock is just obviously a symbol here representing her oppression. Well, we have both the hammock and sunlight, right? So if the if the hum, if the hammock is representing men, right? When Alcibiades comes in, he right wraps her up, just just like um we saw in the yellow wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, the the wallpaper kept the women ensnared at home, right? And here we have the hammock ensnaring this this woman. The sunlight is is rather interesting too, the way it savagely beats down and uh, and such. Did you notice much about the sunlight? Yeah, but it's kind of crazy how they take something that usually is representation of life or empowerment or something good, and they kind of uh, she takes a twist on it, which is really really cool. Well, we have that quote from Alcibiades where he says, "Now nobody will bother us, not even the sun." And that's when she kind of just saw the sliver of the sun coming in, particularly as she was being oppressed by the men at that point in time. And you have another quote, Her insides were burning through night and already falling, slowly, as heavy as a hundred men. And the jungle had begun to recoil in the stance. It recoiled first slowly and then with furious speed, yanking the lasso around the clearing and choking it. So now we have some symbology with the sun choking and taking life away from yeah. the scene, too. Yeah. I also think that if it's showing her the path as well, it, there's a little bit of positivity there, but it is such a negative ambiance to the story, which is very unusual because the sun usually doesn't represent that. Well, and I think the main character's power, I believe, is her femininity because we have the quote, she felt as though her breasts and her womb were the nub of the universe. Yeah, that one that one's pretty startling as well. I think it comes back to it identifies her just as a woman because she doesn't have a name in the story that her femininity is everything about her. It represents her entire being. And I think the story is obviously trying to perpetuate that women need to kind of rise up, that they are more than that, that they can become more than that if they simply just believe in themselves and throw off the shackles of men. Well, it's interesting too here because the way that this story at least presents it, her her hammock must be undone by a man, right? She has to call for the man to release her in order for her to get her revenge, I believe it was. So it's not even, to me, she's painting this picture of power where she doesn't have the ability to change it in, in her Argentina view, worldview of life. Right. And we tried to do a little bit of research on her, and I will I'll admit my ignorance to this, that we couldn't find a, a lot about uh, Levinson here. And that's uh, frustrating because I think that that could lend a lot of insight to this story about her own personal background and her maybe heritage uh, being Argentina, Native American, Latin, Portuguese, Spanish. And I think that could lend some insight here as well for how the different cultures treated women. So very interesting story. I do like some of the ideas of the mosquitoes haunting around her we didn't even really talk about that how there is even some symbols of the mosquitoes wrapped around her much like the men in this plot this woman is constantly suffocated by everything in life it's 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 a very bleak and very the prose is very aggressive is what i would say for this piece so overall i think i enjoyed it a lot you yes definitely enjoy this story it's an amazing piece for such a short piece Love, 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 love the character development. So on this one here, uh, I think that overall, I'm going to give it a solid eight. Uh, I really love the story. A um, little difficult, I think, to pull some of the stuff out of there, not knowing a lot about the author. But this is a piece that you can read, sit down, enjoy, and at least get something out of. Yeah, I think I'm probably at about a 7.5. I, I enjoyed this piece a lot. 
uh, would probably enjoy it more, like you said, with additional readings from this author, like what are some more ongoing themes that she uses in her pieces, because I thought the prose was very engaging, the way it was written uh, in terms of the way she would flip characters around and have them wear different masks. It was it was interesting. I definitely enjoyed my, my time with this one. Well, all right, guys, if you enjoyed today's conversation or looking forward to other literature breakdowns and discussions, please consider hitting that subscribe button to join us on the journey. Una out. Peace.